if I could turn back time. Do, 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 do. Okay, so anyways, welcome back. Kinetic friction. Uh, this was on friction, which was 3.5. Uh, this is the second part where we see how, um, we'll see what happens after we get something to move. And this is where kinetic friction plays a big deal. So this is happens when the object actually begins to move. Uh, and it needs to slide across something. Uh, so this is pretty much the same idea of finding static friction, only now we're dealing with something that is moving. So we're still looking for the coefficient. We're still going to look at this max number. But now um, the object is actually moving, uh, which in general takes less force than getting it to move as well. Um, you know, it's easier to get a couch, um, to continue couch moving rather than get it to start to move to begin with. So formula-wise, it looks exactly the same, only in sub S we have K for kinetic. How much fun is that? All right, so let's, uh, let's do a problem here. Now, when we're doing these problems, the first thing we got to do is figure out if it's going to move. So in order to do that, we need to do our static friction first. So static, kinetic. Static, again, will always be the larger number. So we're going to figure out our normal force. Force normal equals 25 times 9.8. This only works, again, if it's on a flat surface. If it's not on a flat surface, then we've got to look at uh, what angle we're dealing with. So this is going to give us a normal force of 245 newtons. All right, so we'll multiply that by 0.65, and that will give us our maximum amount of friction that or uh, applied force that we need to have in order to get something to move and that is 159.25 anything less than that its friction is going to match it so nothing happens here 160 that's more so what we're going to need to do now is recalculate it using kinetic friction so same normal force 245 only now we multiply by 0.5 this gives us a force of friction of 98. All right, that means whatever we apply, 98 of it will be lost to friction. So if you picture it like this, we're applying 160 newtons this way. 98 are going that way. Yep. So, 98 will always be the opposite direction as we are applying. So, negative 98 plus 160, or negative 160 plus 98, whatever you prefer. Um, overall, then, our net force would be 62. So, this should move with a force of 62. So, it's going to accelerate in whatever direction we're applying. Not as much as we did initially, but it's going to accelerate. And then the same idea goes for 200. So, 98, now this is 200, we will subtract them. All right, uh, one more quick problem here. Let's say we have a 30 kilogram box sitting on the floor. Which means our normal force is the same as our force of gravity, so 294 newtons. If Roy discovers that if he pushes the box horizontally with a force of 300 newtons, the box accelerates um, at 4.5 meters per second squared. Find the coefficient of kinetic friction between the box and the floor. All right. So uh, the first thing we got to figure out is what our net force is. So, 30 times 4.5 gives us a net force of 135 newtons. Well, that's not the same as 300. That means we're losing some by friction. Ugh, that blasted friction. All right, so of 135 equals our force of friction plus our applied force, our force of friction. It 
should equal a negative 165 newtons. So we're pushing this way with 300, and this way we have negative 165 newtons. All right, so we're looking for the coefficient of kinetic friction. So we know what our force of kinetic friction is going to be. So negative 165 newtons should equal Our normal force, oops, let me do one of these numbers. Let me rearrange this just a little bit. I'm getting ahead of myself. Ah, I'm sorry. So, kinetic should equal our 165 divided by our normal force, which is normal force 294. And that should get us a kinetic friction of 0.56. That's our coefficient of kinetic friction. Uh, so a couple quick things to remember. Figure out your normal force right away. Uh, that will help you overall. And again, later on, we're going to have uh, surfaces that are not flat. They'll be on an angle, either above the horizontal or below the horizontal. And we'll have to deal with normal force accordingly. All right. Talk to you later. Goodbye.